you guys know, a very unique personality, and uh, there's no guy like him. And I've had the privilege of being his prayer partner this year, and I just enjoy spending a lot of time with Chandler. Um, I've just I've seen him grow, not just physically, but also uh, in maturity and grow in uh, who he has who he's become. And I'm proud of Chandler in a lot of ways. The guy cracks me up a lot. Um, <clears throat> You know, there, there's no guy like Chandler. And so I hope you guys enjoy uh, Chandler sharing his life. Um, so I'm going to pray over him before he starts. So you guys bow your heads with me. Lord God, we're thankful for this man. Uh, we're thankful and we praise you for the man that he's become. Uh, we ask that you would allow him to be slow to speak as he shares his life, uh, knowing that what he shares is from you um, and knowing that what he shares is a gift uh, that you have given to him. Lord, we're thankful for the ways that he has impacted our lives. We're thankful for the presence of Chandler, um, for who he has become, and uh, we just lift up this time to you and allow him to speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out in droves this morning. Just had a flashback to the senior retreat. Poor Mr. Palmer and the roast session that ensued on the senior retreat. Good morning, I'm Chandler Shorts. This might be your third to last sport report. We don't know how that'll go. But today is May 9th, and it's a reflection for me because, well, it's a day of reflection because I get to look back on four years, and I get to look back on everybody here. And I will never forget this moment because of everybody that's here. So thank you for being here. Uh, I was born May 4th, 1999, the last Star Wars day of the millennium. And <laughs> yeah, it was. I was a nine pound, nine ounce baby boy who was kicking and screaming and had no clue what was going on. I was born in Omaha, Nebraska, home to the College World Series and the, and the word used for Peyton Manning when he wants to have his snap count at one. Football was also a sport I used to play as a kid, but as time grew on, I figured I was too short for football, so dang it, I went to lacrosse. Um, that's fine. That's fine. So after a while, I figured lacrosse was something that would suit me better, and it was something that I wanted to play and go on as a pro career at first. But as the years went on, I figured commentating was a thing for me. And starting in third grade, I went to commentate for a school called Thomas Jefferson Elementary. So let's back up a moment. I moved from Wash I moved from Omaha, Nebraska, to Washington D.C. at the end when I was three, turning four, and I began going to a school called Pine Springs Elementary before changing districts from, from Fairfax County to Falls Church Public Schools. I then went to Mount Daniel Elementary before going on to Thomas Jefferson Elementary, where I began my sports broadcasting career. Two teachers by the name of Nathan Greiner and Stephen Knight. They took me in and taught me how to stand in front of a camera, like I'm doing right now, and speak into a microphone and hope, to, hope technology works at full capacity. In 2007, it was, well, it wasn't the best of the digital age, but Hey, we did what we could, and we produced a lot of videos, which, if I could, I would play. <laughs> um, Tiger Beat Sports was what it was called, the first segment I ever did for sports. And it ran from third to fourth grade, and I had a lot of fun with it. Fourth grade, I had a teacher named Mr. Evans, and he was a Duke fan that rooted for Penn State, and he showed his kids Voyage of the Mimi before Ben Affleck was famous. <laughs> he taught myself and Sam Whitaker. Sam Whitaker is like a brother to me. He and I are best friends. We know a lot about each other, and we talk almost every day. And he's been there for me. I've been there for him. But he is the one of three people in this world that can say they can beat me in a sports trivia contest through and through, not a one-question trivia or who's playing on what team, historical stats. There's a lot of other people I could thank, but I've only got 16 minutes. The other two to beat me, Mr. Evans and Paul Penna, who actually did sports with me over at Cherry Hills. Mr. Knight, Mr. Evans, Mrs. O'Neill, and the rest of you over at TJ, thank you so much for getting me here. When I hit fifth grade, I moved to a middle school, and, well, that was short-lived after a year because I came out here and didn't know what to expect, but I found a new family, a very good family. I moved to Cherry Hills, and, well, I didn't move into Cherry Hills, but I went to Cherry Hills, and there Chandler with sports began, hence the jerseys. Mr. D, who couldn't be here, Gave me the name Chandler with Sports, and I didn't know how to handle it at first. I was like, oh, Chandler with Sports, that eh, just fits. But a teacher named Mr. Ben Scoder, he's the computer teacher over at Cherry Hills, ended up calling me Chandler with Sports, and he actually thought that was my name in the grade book. <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of went along with it, and second semester, sixth grade year, everything kind of fell into place, and Chandler with Sports stuck for three years over at Cherry Hills. 
Then I came over to Valon. My goodness, I did not know what to expect. I was scared to death walking into this building first day. I actually walked into a different classroom than I should have. The old Mr. Summers, the old English department. <laughs> Mr. Summers, I walked into his classroom, looked at him, and made a 180 and walked right back to the second floor. <laughs> I had no idea what I was getting myself into, but I realized that I had a lot of good teachers here. Someday I want to end up at ESPN, and I'll talk about my future goals as time goes on. But when I first moved out here, I expected a lot of snow days. <laughs> Haven't really gotten them. But one thing I have expected is a family. And my family's here today. My parents are in the front row over here. And I've also expected, I've gotten a lot of, got to know a lot of you. All of you are considered family. You guys are here. Hey, Dylan. <laughs> um, Dylan Ritter over there. We'll get to him in just a second. But my goodness, it's, Valor has treated me a lot. From great Brian Mathay to Chris Reese to Bond to the Chariots of Fire, the legend himself, the great Craig Blazer standing in the back corner over there. He was the one that started Chandler with shorts. <laughs> so, if you're wondering how which shorts came about, you can visit Blazer down in the 015 and find that story. Brian Mathay and Chris Reese gave me the title Student Life Liaison my freshman year, and I helped them out with everything from community to running March Madness to even the little things like a scoreboard. I enjoyed it a lot. After my freshman year, Chandler with Sports didn't do announcements freshman. I just referred to myself in third person. Yes. My sophomore year, I was given an interesting schedule, and it was very overloaded because I didn't have it off at first. And so I go marching into Miss Sheila Becky's office and demand that I have an off period. Got an off period. Shouldn't have demanded. Went in two days later and demanded that I have Hutch, birthday girl over here, for a history teacher. So I ended up getting Hutch as a history teacher, and... I, I can say it is one of the funnest classes I've ever sat through. Thank you for that. Uh, sophomore year also brought along disc golf at the end of the year when we weren't trying to make ice rinks and have seniors stomp on them and then ruin everything in between. So, well, Blazer helped set up the, the disc golf course and that had a lot of fun to it. I did forget one thing. We forgot Mr. Whitfield over here. He had to endure my scream freshman year. And I was going to play the video, but you know, you know the situation. Put back the software here. Yeah, the scream. <laughs> but back to sophomore year. Um, Dylan Reuter, I told you I'd get to him in a second. I will now. Dylan Reuter, I can't thank him enough. And instead of speaking as if he wasn't here, I'm just going to speak to him as if he was here. Dylan, thanks for giving me everything you did sophomore year. You're really... I don't want to get emotional thinking about this. <laughs> You did a lot for me, and thank you. When Dylan left at the end of my sophomore year, Jinsu Park and I began to run announcements. We had plans, we had set up everything. And in the span of seven days, they were squashed like Cubs World Series hopes for 107 years, <laughs> or Liverpool's title hopes for the last 25. <laughs> I only ran announcements for seven days my, so my junior year, but it taught me a lot about myself. It taught me that wit sports is not the only thing about me. It taught me that I need to move on from just the name at first. But as people started to call me with sports more and more, I started to realize I like the name. That's how everybody knows me. So Dylan left at the end of sophomore year. Jinsu and I, we were friends junior year, and I got to meet a few teachers. I got to meet Mr. Nielsen, who was having a senior presentation just down the hall. Mrs. Passwaters, I don't know if she made it in. I don't think she did. And Coach Wall, where's Coach Wall? Okay. <laughs> Coach Wall, all three of them did a, they helped me a lot. They helped me find my way here on campus. And without them, I don't think I would have come to the realization that sports broadcasting is A, my career that I want to go into. But B, I have more to life than just with sports. So I pushed forward. And that's how, also how I got my mission statement, which is push through all the obstacles that are put in front of you in your life and never quit on anything or anyone. My senior quote this year was, thought of kind of on the spot sitting at lunch while making a bet that I now have to get another jersey that says without sports. I stole Nate, uh, Nate Stein's senior quote. Nate Stein was a former VSN broadcaster who I took a lot of catchphrases off of, and I didn't realize it until I was looking through the yearbook last week. His, his, his senior quote was negative, Ghost Rider. The pattern is full. That's my senior quote. It should have been, hey, everybody, I'm channeling sports, and this is your short report. But you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. So, I've got Mr. Stone for Senior Bible, and it's been a blessing. I had to cover up the Liverpool flag because I am a Manchester United fan, and I can't support <laughs> Liverpool. It's just something, it's something I can't do. 
Um, <laughs> Liverpool's Mr. Stone has taught me a lot about soccer history and how to be respectful when it comes to soccer instead of just lighting up kids that don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I'm serious. Um, but he does. He never quits on his team, and he's taught me that loyalty is everything in life. And you should always be loyal to who you love and who you care about, teams-wise, family-wise, everything in between. And so senior year has taught me to learn that as well as look back and look at everything, basically. Today is a day of nostalgia. Yeah, it's nostalgia. I got to meet every one of you at some point during my four years here and the countless, other, the countless others that are not here right now. And I can't tell you how much you guys mean to me in your own little which way. A lot of you will get a thank you, and because I'm cut off in about five minutes, you will each get a, some of you will get a thank you. But know this, every one of you in here mean a lot to me, whether it be through academics or through sports or through anything in between. You guys mean a lot to me, your family. So, Craig Blazer, let's start with the uh, thank yous over there. Thanks for being there. Thanks for sticking up for me when I needed it most. Thanks for having lunch and just talking and getting to know me. Mr. Gettler. Gettler. <laughs> that's actually, believe it or not, that's how I introduced Mr. Kettler. That's how I, yeah, that's how I say it. He actually thought my name was Campbell my freshman year. And so, yeah. <laughs> yes. And so now it's uh, Campbell with sports. It just sticks. Mr. Whitfield, how are the ears? Are the ears okay? I mean, it's been three years. I hope they're okay by now. Miss K, oh my gosh. Oh, the front desk, the mornings with Miss Bender. That was, you guys, you guys did a lot for me. Miss Hutch, thank you. Serge, hi. Mr. Jennings. <laughs> Mr. Jennings, you're a legend of Ultimate Frisbee. I played once. <laughs> <laughs> Still a legend. <laughs> Mr. Hajek, Mr. Hajek, if you look out here, you'll see most of my seminar class in here. I'm sorry we wrecked havoc on your Tuesday mornings. Trey, Kelvin, the rest of you, I think we did a great job freshman year. So thank you for putting up with us. How's he push? Good. Mr. Culver, thank you for letting me into your room at 6 p.m. at night so I can roast you on how bad Arsenal is. But thank you for always being there as an outlet to talk to. You've been one of the very few teachers I look at every day and say, I love you as a family member. I love you guys too. Mr. Stone, you got to thank you already, but thank you for being a teacher and thank you for helping me out. Ms. Stoniker, thank you for helping me with my English writing. And Mrs. Dr. Rowe, thank you for calling me with Mr. Wood Sports in English. <laughs> she is the only teacher to have done that. Uh, we had two Chandlers in our class and she distinguished them by Mr. Wood Sports and Mr. Moore. <laughs> Mr. Palmer, I'm sorry the Raiders are moving to Vegas, but I'd always love to come into the Bible Corps and speak to you again. Mr. Glossinger, thank you for talking about hockey. I hope the abs get better. <laughs> Mr. Rice, thanks for having a great year in VSN this year. It's been an honor. Mr. Higgins, Ultimate is an amazing thing with you. Brett Favre, Mr. Ostransky, nicknamed Brett Favre for Friday morning basketball. He's a legend at his craft. Mr. Gonzalez, thank you very much for what you've done in the arts department and just talking to me when you needed it. Mrs. Trim, oh my gosh, you have no idea how many words I can say to thank you. So many words to say I could, I could thank you a lot, but I'm running out of time. And then you go over to Mr. Stoner, my prayer partner. Wonderful introduction over here, and he's just been a man of God and leading me in the right path and everywhere I go. Reese Bergman, I've only known you for about a year now, but you've been a great friend in the year I've gotten to know you, and you're going to do great things in the hockey world. Brian Brogan, thanks for keeping order in Blazers Red seminar class. You, Somebody's got to do it, yes. Blazer tries as hard as he can, but as much as I make his coffee, it's usually a struggle. And to the rest of you, I'll get to my parents in a second because they're the most important. To the rest of you, thank you. Mrs. Shrimp, thanks for being there. Thanks for having an outlet to talk to. Hey, Dylan, again. All right, now I actually have to get the tissues out. Daddy, thank you for being there. Thank you for making sure I got to school on time making sure I succeeded at life. Thank you. Not over yet. Oh. <laughs> Mom, thanks for making sure I went to bed with food in my stomach. And thank you for being there with everything in life. You've helped me. And thank you for that. Well, 
That's your sport report, your third to last sport report. I'm Chandler with Shorts. I wish you all a very pleasant Tuesday morning, wherever you may be. Johnny. Uh, if you could sports commentate for any team, uh, which one would you pick? Oh, that's tough. Probably the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Alex Bradbury, I do want to point out something about Bradbury. I did forget him in my thank yous. Alex has been my commentary partner for two years, and he's put up with me and my dick by towel catchphrases, and <laughs> well, having to listen to me in BSN. But go ahead, please. Uh, I was going to ask what your most memorable broadcast was about. Oh, it was with you. It was Golden and Valor sophomore year, the grade eight. We hosted it, and that was my greatest broadcast without a question. Uh, Tess. Huh? Go to ESPN, hopefully host Sports Center, and change it back to its old 90s glory days because right now it's not in their glory days. But go to ESPN, get a high paying job, and provide for my family in the future. Jackson Dunn. Uh, hey. Did me pestering you? Like, give you an edge. <laughs> yes. Um, I honestly think that your pestering made my ping pong game a lot better than it should be. But you've been there, and it's fun to play with you every day. Thank you, too, man. Thank you. Trey. Yeah, Chen, dude, I just wanted to say that, you know, you're such a light at this school, and you're such, like, a unique personality, and it's such a pleasure to, like, see your face every day and, like, get to talk to you because you're such an interesting and like cool dude to hang around so i just want to say that i appreciate it thank you Trey. camden uh, i just wanted to say it's been great being able to beat you two years now at the golf <laughs> just remember you're still under 500 against me uh, no <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> uh, yeah but it's been great being around you two hour rounds and 36 whole rounds those make my day so and yeah, we'll be going out in an hour so I can beat you again. Oh, <laughs> Kelvin Ivory, one of my best friends here. I've known him since freshman year seminar. Mr. Hajek, who left, had to deal with us, but we, we made life easy for him, I guess. How much money have you spent? Oh, dear. <laughs> no. <laughs> A lot. Um, Mom, thank you for providing food and money into my account so I could buy shakes for a year. I was addicted to those, and um, enough money. Enough. Can you give us like a specific reference? Like a reference. I don't think I have a reference. At the right, at the moment, what's my milkshake count? I think I'm at like 290. Over four years, over four years. I feel like you'd be more. Yeah. Oh, 290. Bon actually, Bon said if I hit 500, he would pay my pay for my shakes the rest of well, I've been my time. Back, so. <laughs> <laughs> and when I get my first signing bonus, she'll be getting double what I had to spend at the store. So who makes up for it? Harry fought no. You spent more money on shakes and bistro food. Oh. Oh. Again, that would be us. <laughs> bistro food. <laughs> Mr. Higgins. Uh, there's some freshmen in this room. What is one lesson from your time at Valor that you would want them to learn now before they have to wait four years to get through? I, I actually have two lessons for them. Freshmen, do your homework. Don't fail tests, in, of course, but be patient and get to know your teachers. They are some of the most interesting people in the world, and they will lead you in places that you do not expect yourself to be in. I sat in Brogan's chair four years ago, not that exact spot, but a different room. And I looked at myself, I'm like, as a senior, I'm not really going to be remembered here. But through everybody I've met in here, you guys have led me to that point. And this is why I'm here where I am here today. Chandler, I'd just like to say there is going to be an uh, immense amount of awkwardness on Friday mornings when we play in silence. Um, <laughs> the announcement that you have done has definitely progressed over the last four years. It's much better now. Um, and so I've seen mature in that way. But just to show up, every Friday morning for the last four years and r rarely missing a day is something that I couldn't imagine any freshman, let alone senior, doing um, to hang out with a bunch of 
you know, faculty members and staff to play basketball and, and announce them on a regular basis. It's just the most unique experience I've ever had playing sports. Um, the other question, so that's an encouragement to you is just to continue to do the things where most people don't expect you to do them. And, um, and while even you might struggle at the very beginning to get it done what you want it to be, then it will, you know, as you put your effort and practice into it, and it's, it's for the rest, and we'll continue to do so. So well done on that. Yeah. Uh, the other question is, would you give us the, the, the league standing for the top seven in the mm -hmm. English Premier League? Chelsea lead the league. They can clinch the Premier League title at the Hawthorns on Friday night. Tottenham sit four points behind. Uh, or seven points behind with three games to play. So then you go, oh boy. Now we go, Liverpool, whose flag I hid. <laughs> they are third, but for the last 25 years, they've been somewhere below that. But currently they're third. Uh, City sit fourth, I believe. And then you sit United fifth, Arsenal sixth with the game in hand. Your Gunners are somehow still in the race. So where's United? Fifth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Go ahead, Tess. The scream video. <laughs> it's connecting. Hold on. There it is. Well, we have to play this clip, too. Holding, <laughs> holding. I do. Right in there. Headphones. Yeah. Headphones. Okay, then we connect. Always a moment. There we go. All right. I don't want to play it yet. This clip is from the broken hole. The uh, VSN documentary, the greatest video ever made on campus. <laughs> I'm serious, it is. Mr. Whitfield had it, and Blazer too, they did a great job having to interview. We had to interview them three times because we didn't know how to work a camera. Here we go. No. Here we go. Ready? Here we go. Yeah, they're gonna put the sound on the headphone jack. Go into settings. Sound I'll just play it from here. You know, we'll just play it on the small screen. Make this easier. But no one can see that. Can you hear it? We strapped him into that harness and and had no idea that at that very moment we were destroying something beautiful. We. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 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 Uh, so real quick, uh, for those of you who don't have class, you don't have to leave. We're going to pray over to the I have class. I have class. <laughs> I'm in class right now. We're taking a test. Right? Oh. Teaching. So yeah. Did you know right? You're getting a little more love. It's okay. I know you are. That's true. I have to stay for two more days. I got to go back to class. But hey, you're good. Thank you so much. That's great. I heard that was awesome. I can open so many to go to class. Why don't you open for us? If anyone wants to pray in between, uh, feel free to do so, and then I'll close this for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Father God, thank you again uh, for this couple minutes we had to hear about you, my Lord. Would you go before him and teach him uh, to love you, teach him to know you? Uh, 
Lord, we're thankful for the ways that he has impacted us. Uh, we are amazed at the ways that you have impacted him and all the things we heard from him, the thank yous and the joys that he shared with us. But Lord, we are, we are thankful and we praise you for who he has become. And we ask that you would go before him, uh, that you would teach him uh, the ways to your truth and the way to live uh, a life following after Jesus. Thank you for Chandler. Continue to push him to do that. Yeah, Lord, I just thank you for Chandler. We all do. Um, he has uh, definitely impacted every single one of us. Uh, as a, a teacher, uh, we get to connect with students, usually just for about a year when they're in a class, but Chandler is one of those with, with each of us as teachers. I know I can I can say this, and it's, it's true, that he has uh, managed to stay in, in our lives and stay connected with each one of us all four years. And uh, Looking back on these four years with him, I can say that that has been a, a tremendous joy for me, a blessing to each one of us. And so we just, uh, I just thank you for that, that unique quality that he has to um, connect with people and to stay connected with, uh, with people. I just see him as being someone who is very loyal and faithful. And uh, Lord, I just pray that he would continue to see the, the blessing of that, that as he... Uh, is loyal to others that he would experience that in return and uh, in this next season of life that he would surround him with uh, an incredible community that can pour into him and bless him and continue to to mold and shape him into the person that you're calling him to be god i pray you watch over my brother chandler while oh while he uh while he he's going forward in life that you would surround him with friends and mentors that would speak life into him that can him and in hard times, God, I pray, I, I pray that you would remind him of his own mission statement to keep moving forward and that uh, he would be a light wherever he goes as he has been here. Um, bless him, bless his family. I pray that their sustained relationship would be full of love as he moves onward and uh, be with his parents uh, as well. And God, we just ask your whole blessing and favor over this time of transition in his life shape him into the man that, that you're already making him to be God. Father God, Lord, I thank you so much for Chandler. As always, people are so thankful for him, Father, uh, in my life. And uh, you bless them with so many amazing gifts. And those same community uh, members that we pray for will pour into him. Father, help him use the gifts that you bless them with to pour into others. Uh, Lord, I can't wait to see what he does on the path you've laid before him. Father, thank you so much. Lord, I thank you for the gift of Chandler in my life, and I uh, thank you for the many gifts that you've given him. I pray your blessing on him, that you would bless him and keep him, make your face shine upon him, and give him peace. Father, I know there's a lot of people in here who want to you know, lift Chandler up and will continue to do so throughout their lives. Um, I just want to say that uh, thank you for staying close to him and for drawing him to yourself. And that we ask that you would continue to do that. Uh, would you continue to give Chandler experiences that will shape him into somebody that you want him to be? And would you remind Chandler that um, his value uh, does not lie in those temporal things, but only in the internal. And continue to keep him and remind him of that as he goes forward out of valor and would you continue to bring awesome people around him. So now, Lord, you send Chandler out to do the work that you have him to do. Amen.
Oh my God! Yes, yes. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 